Hey, I'm Aaron from GameWithDudes.com, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Fluffy Dragons. Fluffy Dragons is a bluffing game playable from two to five players. It takes about 10 to 25 minutes to play, and it's for players ages eight and up. Fluffy Dragons is being published by LAMF Games or LAMF. I'm not sure which one. What's most important is that you, I guess you, you are a dragon, and you are competing against your fellow dragons to see who can get the most gems. The most treasure. You're, you're essentially greedy, but you're also fluffy. And you're also lie to get what you want. But you're also fluffy. Don't forget the fluffiness. Anyway, let me show you how it plays. So one thing I do want to make clear, I should say before I forget, is that everything you're going to see today, and probably may have already seen, is a prototype. So this is not the final version of Fluffy Dragons. So just bear that in mind. This is a prototype. So this is the box. You've seen it, it has the size that a box has. It's the prototype box, that's fine. It gives you all the important information. You have a title, you have a fluffy dragon on it. Fluffy dragon on the back, number of players, all those good things. Two to five, 10 to 25 minutes, ages eight and up. LAMF games, so yeah, I'll put that up here. So in terms of components, you're gonna have five different types of dragons. You have the pink dragon, the blue dragon, the white dragon, and as pictured earlier, sort of an orange and a red dragon who also have corresponding gems and some really nice artwork. Much like their fellow dragons. Every dragon is going to have five different gems of their color, their own meeple, and you're also going to have six uh, black gems. We'll get into that in just a second. Youngest player would go first. Youngest player would actually get this uh, egg black egg meeple and youngest player would take a look at their hand. So your hand consists of one of the five elements. So you have lightning, fire, water, earth, Winds. words. And then every dragon has a cave card in their particular color. So the youngest player would take their cards and kind of just shuffle them up and then they would flip over a random element card. And whatever element that is, you would take one of the black gems and put it onto that element on the element board. So because fire came up, fire goes here. I really wanna do a Beavis and Butthead reference, but I don't know, maybe just feel older. At this point, simultaneously, every player would pick one of their element cards and place it face up in front of them. That will be in, that's gonna be referred to as an unavailable element. So because this is a bluffing game, uh, that just gives everyone a little bit of information about what that player may or may not be seeking to do. So for the pink dragon, lightning is gonna be unavailable. So that leaves four other spots. For the blue dragon, wind is gonna be unavailable. And for the white dragon, earth is gonna be unavailable. This is pretty much the setup and you're not ready to begin. So there is a rock, paper, scissors element to the game, meaning based on where your dragon goes and where other gems and things are, where other dragons are, excuse me, uh, every element beats the two elements in front of it going clockwise. So earth beats wind and lightning. Wind beats lightning and water. Lightning beats water and fire. Water beats fire and earth. Fire beats earth and wind. So every element beats the two that are in front of it going clockwise. So you're only gonna pick one unavailable element per round. So everybody would just have one card out per round. And it, like I said, it's just public knowledge. So it just increases the chance of you, you know, getting an idea of maybe how people are, you know, how your opponents are bluffing. Obviously pink is not going to bluff that they are on lightning because, well, they can't because their lightning card is gone. The game works in several phases. The first phase is the claiming phase. And in the claiming phase, the player with the first player meeple token chooses an elemental card from their hand and places it face down in front of them. So the pink player might choose fire. And they're gonna put it face down and they're gonna put it to the right of the rest of their cards. So everybody knows that's the one that they are uh, claiming to be there. At that point, that player would also take their meeple and place it onto the elemental board where they're claiming this to be. So this was fire. 
definitely serves. Let's see how well it serves. It serves pretty well. So this is fire. So maybe they want to tell the truth and actually go to fire. There they go. Or maybe they want to go to wind. Let's say they want to go to earth. Okay. That's okay. One at a time, each player will do the exact same thing. So blue is going to do that as well. Blue is going to put that down and they're going to claim that they're going to earth. And then let's see the white dragon is going to go there and they're going to claim that they're on lightning. Once everybody has claimed where their dragon supposedly is or maybe isn't, at that point, every player could make a wager. So how a wager works is you would take up to two gems. You can only place two gems on any one other player's dragon. So let's say, actually I'll go over here. Let's say the white dragon thinks that the pink dragon is lying and they're gonna wager, they're gonna wager one gem. That's basically them placing a bet saying, I'm, I, they're betting one of their own gems that the pink dragon is lying. The blue dragon also thinks the pink dragon is lying. The pink dragon thinks that the blue dragon is lying and pink and blue suspect that the white dragon is lying. Everybody's made a wager now, now we move on to the revealing phase. Starting with the first player of the round, that's gonna be the pink player. And one at a time, each player in clockwise order will flip over the elemental card they use that round, revealing their element, and then they'll settle scores. Pink showed everybody that their dragon went to Earth. Let's see if it's true. They really went to fire. So what that means is white and blue both bet one that pink was lying. So they. Now what happens is called settling the score. So what that means is the white player will get one of pink's gems because they wagered one and they get their original gem back. The same thing for blue. Blue bet one gem that pink was lying. So they're gonna take one of pink's gems and then get their own gem and it comes back over to them. We go down here to blue and pink thought that blue was lying. Blue claimed that the card that they played was the earth element. Let's see if it's true. The survey says they were telling the truth. So blue just gets to keep this and pink loses yet another gem. Now over here, pink and blue really thought that the white dragon was lying. They bet as much as they could, which is two. So let's see, white claimed to be lightning. They played lightning. Let's see, they actually played lightning. So because they were not lying, because they were not lying, they get to keep all those gems. Another condition was called the sneaky dragon. The sneaky dragon is a dragon who lies, but no one made any bets against them. So that means you really got away with it. You lied, no one even thought that you lied at all, and you got away with it. If you're the sneaky dragon, it means you get to steal the number of gems that adds up to the number of players playing minus one. So in a three player game, you could steal two. In a four player game, you can steal three. And that's three of any color gem from any player. It could be three from one player, two from one player, one from another player. Any combination adding up to the number of players playing minus one. I could add up. So after uh, everything is revealed and everybody settles the score, we go through what's called the clash phase. And then starting with the first player of the round, that's still gonna be the pink player. In the clash phase, each player will knock down their own dragon. I have them laying down, so it's kind of easier to see, but normally you have them up. So I'll just put them up right now. So each player would knock down their own dragon and steal one gem from each player whose element they beat. Uh, keep in mind, pink has the uh, is on earth. Earth beats wind and lightning. So that means pink would beat the white dragon here. So pink would get one of their gems because they beat them. Blue is also on earth and earth beats wind and lightning. So they would also take a gem from the white dragon. Now the white dragon is on lightning. However, there isn't anybody on water or fire. So then the clash phase, unfortunately they don't get anything. It's also worth mentioning that players who use the same element just ignore each other. So because blue and pink are on the same element of earth, they're not gonna fight. They're not, they don't clash. They only clash the people who are up to two spaces away from where you are clockwise. 
And also any player who happens to be on a space that has the black gem is considered lost treasure and they would take that into their own collection, but nobody was there. So it just stays there. At the end of the round, you place a black gem on the element used by the last player of that round. Last player of the round used lightning, so a black gem would go on lightning. It might be a little hard to see, but that is, these are gems right here. Gem is outrageous. Oh, one thing I did forget, I'm sorry. When you reveal your card, the card that you placed as your unavailable goes back to your hand. So these would have been placed back in everybody's hands. My mistake. So the card that you played in that round now will become your unavailable element. So now blue has earth unavailable, pink has fire unavailable, and white has lightning unavailable. I probably should be going this way. I've been going like this. So, but should I keep up with the inconsistency or just really be going from pink to white to, but eh, you get the idea. You will go clockwise. I'll go clockwise. I'll be good. I'll go clockwise. So now this player will go first in the next round. If two players happen to end up on a, a space with a gem or gems, whoever landed there, whoever got there first in turn order would actually get the gem at the end of the round. And that is pretty much how the game plays. It's pretty simple mechanically. You are, you're bluffing. You are looking through your cards and trying to figure out what you can get away with. And it probably would have helped had I actually had the cave cards out to put gems on. <laughs> you know, mistakes, mistakes happen. You know, it's, that's what these cards are for actually. I put it over here to the left. So the card that you're playing is always gonna be to the right. So everybody should have had their cave card out to put their actual gems on. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. I, yeah, I, mm. mistakes were made. The game works in a set of rounds. So for a two or three player game, there'd be six rounds. Uh, and a four player game, to be four rounds. And a five player game, to be five rounds. It also works in elimination. So if you're the only dragon left with gems, you would win the game regardless of whatever round it was. And you would score every gem that you have. All your own gems are gonna worth one point. Um, any gem that's not the color of your dragon at the end of the game is gonna be worth two points. And any of the black gems is gonna be worth twice the number of players. So in three player game, the black gems will be worth six points a piece. Also, if you make a rainbow, meaning you make a complete set of all the different colors that are available between you and all the other players, there's a nice chart that's gonna be on screen right about now, somewhere here or here or somewhere around here. There'll be a chart that will show you how uh, making a rainbow scores based on number of players that you have. And that is how Fluffy Dragons plays and why this box is not even because I place it on top of two gems. If I can balance it. That's the meta game. Let me see if I win. I lost. That's okay. I tried. All right, back up top, so that guy can say things with his face and not his hands. I'm taking this with me. So that was how Fluffy Dragons plays. I can see it having a lot of appeal for kids who like the art, and like the idea of getting away with something and bluffing. But I can also see a bunch of adults liking getting away with something and bluffing. I can see adults playing in the morning, middle of the day. And this game would really be a hoot late at night when you can barely remember anything and you're trying to get away with something. Regardless, hilarity will ensue. There will be a link in the description if you want to back this game on Kickstarter, which I suggest that you do. It's a fun game. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Take care. Stay safe. Be fluffy. Be blessed.